What are we going to preach on 9-11 this year? On Sunday, 9-12, I'm going to preach that perfect law casts out. Consider this letter of John. John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We're living in the age of fear. There are those who want you to be afraid. Be afraid of Muslims. Be afraid of the government. Be afraid of your neighbor who may be doing something suspicious. Be afraid even of other Christians who may think differently than you do. The anniversary of the attacks of 9-11 now looms as a cloud of fear. What if it happened again? Can we feel safe? The Christian message about 9-11 is clear. We can't let fear take over our lives. It's not faithful. Besides, as the letter of John says, being afraid all the time is punishment, not love. The King James Version makes it even clearer. The King James Version says fear is torment. Torment. Wow. Torment is really painful punishment. When you're afraid, when you're in torment, you're in pain, you're suffering. And the ironic part is, it's something you're doing to yourself. When you're fearful, all the time. So, I'd like to summarize the John text this way. Fear stinks. Let's get rid of it. How do we do that? Problem is, the letter of John says, perfect love is the way to cast out fear. But who's perfect? You know, starting with me. Am I perfect? No, I'm not. I'm really not. So how is this supposed to work? You may very well ask yourself. In a perfect world, nobody would fear anybody. We'd all get along. Nobody would feel this fearful, painful torment. But even though we're not perfect people, we can actually put down some of the fear and pick up some of the love. Maybe not all of it, but we can do some of it. Because fear actually is keeping the love out. That's what John says. It's the fear that's keeping the love out. The more fear you let go of, the more you're able to let the love in. It's hurting us. It's hurting us, this fear. We're closed. We're afraid. We're afraid of other Americans. Our society is suffering as a consequence. It's, the, it's a punishment. It feels like a punishment. Turning on one another like this, all it does is give aid and comfort to those who actually do wish to harm us. Why should they do anything more to us when we seem perfectly willing to punish ourselves with fear? gets worse. It gets worse. Here's another thing you need to know about fear. It bleeds. You think you can be just afraid of that stranger on the other side of the world or the stranger in the big city. But fear bleeds into other areas of your life. It bleeds into other relationships. Once you let fear push love out, then what happens is that it takes away the love of neighbor, the love of family, and finally even the love of God. God has to push out. Because really when you fear everyone, whom can you trust? 
Fear spirals down. It spirals downward. It starts as fear. It becomes hatred. And then it goes to violence. In Jacksonville, Florida, a pipe bomb is set off at a contested site for a mosque. In Texas, a playground is torched at a mosque. A Muslim care driver, just trying to earn a living, responds yes to the question, are you a Muslim, from a passenger, and he is stabbed multiple times. Muslims in Tennessee tell people in the news media they're afraid to celebrate the end of their holy season of Ramadan publicly because they don't know what their neighbors will do. That's how poisonous fear becomes. It drives out love and it pushes us away from each other and from God. It drives us in to the arms of hate and violence. Dr. Martin Luther King described this dangerous descending spiral. He said, the ultimate weakness that is violence is that it is a descending spiral. It begets the very thing it seeks to destroy. Instead of diminishing evil, it multiplies it. Violence merely increases hate. So it goes. On and on through our lives, so it goes. Our relationships are destroyed. Our relationship with God, with family, with neighbor, with friend, with the world, descend into darkness. But there's a way out. There's a way. There's a way out of fear and hate and violence. It's the way of love. Darkness, Dr. King said, cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. It doesn't need to be perfect. That to be perfect. Some, some love is good. More love is better. It's the way into the and out of the darkness. Amen.